Hey there! Welcome to another video on the Curved Road Only Challenge, where we build a profitable, traffic efficient and good looking city using only curved roads. Today we'll be completing the central part of the city's first residential district. I thought about what cool stuff we could do with this place, and eventually I figured that a pedestrian only commercial area would be perfect. Here, citizens and tourists will be able to shop in luxurious boutique and large stores, and take long walks next to the river and on the large pathways, without having to worry about cars or trucks. Of course, this will heavily focus on the content provided by the plazas and promenades DLC. We start by drawing the pedestrian area district and placing the first service point building that will serve the entire area. We then convert the middle circle into a large avenue with tram tracks. That's right, tram will be the first public transport system to be implemented in the city, and you're here to watch its launch. We convert the other pathways to the types that we want. I have done some tests before recording, so I already know what kind of pathways this area will have and where. The central area will feature the almost white sandstone pedestrian street, with trees in the middle, with the exception of the paths next to the river, which will have no trees so they can be wide walking areas. The roads below will be the grey bluestone pedestrian streets. I'll tell you why in a minute. We change the types of trees on each street. Most of them will feature some nice palm trees for some shade and overall looks. The streets in the very center will have taller trees, the California palm, which, as you might remember, we have used throughout the rest of this district during the last video. We polish the shoreline by building some nice keys, making the area much more fancy. Again, we use the California palms as the type of tree that will outline the river, or man-made lake, whichever you want to call it. After this, we work on the bottom part of the district, the area next to the highway. We start by making some generic guidelines because we need to bulldoze the existing segment to level it, as there is a huge change in elevation that I do not like. Making the guidelines will allow us to rebuild the highway exactly as it was before, without having to eyeball anything, or destroy the area that's already developed. The terrain is leveled in a way that the highway is at a lower altitude than the buildings in the district. After leveling the terrain with the level and slope terrain tools, we can then build a tram track. This tram track will be perfectly parallel to the highway, and will provide easy access between the residential and industrial areas, and also other areas that will be built in the future. Similarly, we also build a cycling lane, following the same principles. This way, there are plenty of options for people to travel the city without using cars, which will greatly contribute to a healthy traffic flow. As you will see during the video, we still have no serious traffic problems, even without proper connections to the highways. We can then expand the pedestrian-only district. I'm thinking the circular area will be dedicated to shops and tourism, while this area will be for housing. The highways have sound barriers, which can serve as protection as well. After all, there is a huge slope right next to the cycling lane. I wanted to build a fence here for some protection, but there was a weird snapping with the fence building tool, where the fence was snapping directly to the cycling lane preventing me from building a fence right next to it. So I ditched the entire idea. I guess cyclists will just have to be careful or invest in some good quality helmets and protective gear. We upgraded the tram track inside the district to a pedestrian path, so it allows for zoning right on the street itself. And built the rest of the layout for this area. The I-shaped roads will be tram tracks in order to connect the central avenue to the tracks parallel to the highway. Streets for the residential area will be the bluestone streets, and the feature tree will be a tree called Eastern Cottonwood. We can then start placing the pedestrian district specific parks and plazas. We'd start with a small selection of facilities at first, so I just place a couple of them at this stage. We provide water to the entire area and zone some initial commercial buildings to get it going. In the meanwhile, there are other areas and aspects of the city that need attention. We expanded the water system by building some water towers and treatment plants, as well as the energy system by building more wind turbines and completing the wind hill. 
There was also some demand for jobs, so this was a good opportunity to develop the industrial area further and zone some more factories. We can also upgrade all the roads that have buildings zoned on them to improve export and import time schedules, provide some more services and, of course, start thinking about the tram access that will bring people here all the way from the residential district. For the moment, the tram track will travel the entire superior layout and cut to join one of the avenues to access the inferior layout. The trams will then go through the circular industrial area. I added another ring in the shape and I'm also thinking of putting the tram depot here as well. It seems like an adequate location for it. After I'm done with the basic travel path for the tram, we can then connect it to the existing tracks that were already built on the other side of the avenue. I'm thinking a nice tunnel will do nicely here. Finally, we can add a tram depot. We also adjust the terrain so it doesn't look weird and out of place. Back to the residential district to zone some more houses and bring some people into the city. And we also work on services. We built the city's first high school, because the commercial buildings in the pedestrian buildings will need some educated workers. So we might as well start working on that. We also provide essential services to the opposite side of the district, as this area is now getting developed and will need servicing soon. Finally, we build a couple more cemeteries. As the one the city has is nearly full. Can't wait for those crematoriums, can we? It's time to set the tram line. Starting on the industrial district, we add stops in strategic locations, usually evenly spaced for good coverage. As you've seen, I ended the track at the edge of the district on a loop so the trams have a way to return through the opposite direction. We then change the color of the line and the type of tram. A nice yellow and old looking model will do fine. It reminds me of the trams we have in downtown Lisbon. We continue to zone and develop the city as demand kept changing, and as I expanded closer to the edge of the district, I enabled all the remaining park area buildings that were yet to be enabled to provide for more leisure to these new houses. We also enabled some new policies on the pedestrian area. Street music will raise overall happiness and land value in the entire area, and slow driving will make sure cars drive slowly when driving at the adjacent roads. It was then time to decorate the middle area, the very core of this entire circular district. And for the central piece, I chose the Statue of Wealth. I know what you're thinking, dude, the Statue of Wealth has like the most basic, unique building in the game, surely there are better buildings to put here. Yes, I know it's a simple asset, but I legitimately didn't like how any other building looked. Well, I actually like the Mall of Moderation, but that asset has embedded parking lots which wouldn't be very realistic for an attraction in a car-free area. Eventually, if I ever unlock it in this city, I want to see how the sunken shopping mall will look here. That building requires you to have a pedestrian area visited by 500 tourists per week to be unlocked. For the time being, I'll just do the best I can with this central area. After decorating it, I actually don't think it looks half bad. The plazas and poppable food trucks and ice cream stands make it look like a big fair where people come here and have fun. Of course, the trees and flowers always make a huge difference as well. Then, we added some easy walking access between the residential district to the tram tracks, by building a pathway that connects the sidewalks from both the neighborhood road and the tram track. This way, people can walk through their neighborhood until they reach the end of the block and catch a tram that leads to their workplace at the factories, or to the commercial pedestrian area if they want to have some fun. Of course, we do the same on the other side of the district as well. I try to decorate these areas as best as I can with fences and adequate trees. At this point, I hadn't realized that people cannot cross the tram track to get to the other stop so they can actually only catch the tram that's nearest to them, and not the tram that goes the opposite direction. I'll come back here later to fix that. Mm -hmm. 
Similarly, I do the same at the factories. I convert the avenue to a 6 lane to force the tram stops to be in the sidewalks and not in the middle of the road and also to add some crosswalks so people can go to the stop on the other side. We continue to work on accesses. Here we provide connection points next to key areas and intersections so people can get to the cycling lane. We keep on decorating the commercial area, this time by placing these large fountain plazas. It's cool that you can change the pavement type to match the tiles on the street, but I'm not sure why this is the only asset where you can do that. We add some more details and I keep on building new houses. Eventually, we reach a very important milestone of 6000 population. This is where you unlock high density buildings, which we will be using to complete the central area. Oh, and at the same time we have a big fire. And heavy crime. We will test having high density commercial in the most central ring, in contrast to the low density commercial in the outer ring. I'm thinking it will look nice. Separating these buildings, there will be a row of offices. Moving on to the bottom area, we can have a nice pathway in the unzonable area, creating some type of unofficial park to provide walking access and leisure areas. For the residential we will be building next. After we're done building the pathway, we then zone the residential. And I had big question marks here, because I wasn't sure if I wanted to have high density apartments here. But if it doesn't look good, we can always apply a high rise ban policy for example, or even dezone the apartments and build low density instead. If only you could do that in real life, right? While construction is underway, I decorate the area with some trees. I then do the same on the other side. The gap between zones is smaller in this area, so the pathway will also be shorter. As the area grows and gets more shops and malls, the transportation of goods to the shop starts to become a problem, so we place a small cargo service point to help with deliveries. At this point, there's a lot of demand for educated workers to work in a newly built malls and shops more than we currently have in the city, so all the business owners are complaining about it and we start having some abandoned buildings. While we wait for citizens to get educated at the most recent high school, we decorate the central area with trees. This would have to be done sooner or later anyway. This is actually a good time for a quick shout out to the channel supporters, who are directly contributing for the continuation of the series and the upload of more videos like the one you're watching. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Between the cycling lane and the tram track, we plant a row of eastern cottonwood trees, adding a nice outline to represent the end of the pedestrian area. At this point, all those new houses and new people who started living at the city need a place to work, so we expand the industrial district even further and start zoning on the second ring of the chain. We upgrade the roads, provide water and power, and add tram stops to this area as well, adding more value to the city's tram network. Eventually, we unlock the commercial zone landmark by having all those commercial zones in the pedestrian area, which we place in the central ring. This is the last unique asset that will be placed here, so we can finally complete the zoning and decorating of the district. I build a couple of pathways for access, and zone some more commercial and office spaces. And of course, I conclude everything by planting trees. As I've mentioned before, we needed to provide walking access to the other side of the tram tracks. It's stupid, but people really cannot cross the tram track themselves. And because I don't want to change the street type to force the creation of a crosswalk, we have to invest in a construction of an expensive bridge. We adjust things in order to make them look good. In this case, I connect the elevated bridge directly to the neighborhood. I also take advantage of the bridge to provide another direct access to the cycling lane. Of course, we then do the same on the other side as well. Hope you enjoyed the time-lapse and commentary, I'll meet you live shortly for a complete tour of what we've done so far.
Alright guys, so a lot of progress during the time-lapse. We basically initiated and completed an entire pedestrian district in just one go. Overall I'm happy with the result, it looks somewhat like what I imagined. Still not sure about the high-rise um, buildings for residential next to the highway though. I think they look nice, they add a nice contrast but I'm not sure if low-density residential would look even better. But uh, yeah, share your thoughts about it. Anyway, let's take a look at some data. So by clicking on the pedestrian area info panel, we can see that um, our entertainment is pretty cool, about um, 395 per cell, which is almost the max, at least by what I can see on this slide. Happiness, it's... well, it could be better, and land value is also almost at the maximum as well. It specializes on commercial with 57% of the zones here being commercial and we have a total weekly goods sold of about 44,000. If we go and take a look at the unlocking panel we can see that we're having about 111 tourists per week and to unlock the sunken plaza shopping mall which is the building that I told you about we need um, 500 of them. So perhaps we will not be able to achieve this number in this particular pedestrian um, district, but perhaps we can, we can build a bigger one with higher potential for more visitors. But despite that, I'm not entirely dissatisfied with what we've done here in the central area. I think uh, the Statue of Wealth actually looks really, really good here with um, all the assets that I've chosen to complement it. So it's a nice open area where people can come and relax and it kind of contrasts with the heavy density that we have uh, on the sidelines, you know, right next to the circle. So overall, I'm happy with it. I still haven't put anything in the middle here. Uh, I left it blank. It doesn't really shock me. Perhaps in the future we can put some flower paths or some trees, but for the time being, I'm gonna leave it as it is right now. We still have a lot of demand for uh, educated workers, so this is a problem that I told you about during the time-lapse. We still only have one high school in the city. Let me just uh, try and find it. Here it is. It's running pretty much at full capacity, pretty much. We can see that we actually have um, more supply of students or people who want to study at the high school than what our facilities allow to but it's not really worth it for me to place a secondary high school. We'll just have to wait and let the game adjust and let time pass. I think that will be a nice solution for it. I particularly like this area in the middle with the uh, tram connection here and with the parks on the sides and all the trees that we've built. I think it looks really, really nice. Very cozy, very downtown-ish. If we take a look at the tram track, we can see how it's performing. So. Let's take a look at that. So uh, we can see um, at the time that the line is not really that efficient. So only 26% car trip saved, which is not that impressive. And if we take a look at the amount of people that are in each stop and in each vehicle, we can see that um, there's not really a lot of people using it. I think in the future, as we develop this area even further, we'll have more people um, using the tram line. Another thing that could be affecting the low usage of the tram track is the fact that it's not a very direct connection between the residential district and the industrial district because it kinda has to do this entire loop. So perhaps what we can do is have the tram line come through here and instead of continuing this loop and come through the highway, perhaps we can have it come through here through this wavy, wavy road and connect directly here and in here, so it's a more direct connection. And then in the future we can have a bus line that will start here and go along the entire um, district. So people who are catching the tram can leave here at this location, then catch the bus and go all the way here. And the same logic can also be applied on the residential district. Oh yes, and I'm aware that we have a lot of uh, abandoned buildings, but that will be fixed later on. For the time being, I'm just gonna delete them and pretend that there's nothing wrong with my current city, okay? Just ignore them for the time being. 
you complain, you get bulldozed. Okay, so for the tram track, we need a four lane with tram track, so this over here. And we can continue all the way here. And you know, instead of having the tram track go through here, through this busy intersection and go all the way here, perhaps we can cut directly here with the normal tram track and connect to this loop. And this can be the end of the line. So let me grab a normal tram track. I think this is the one. And I think I can add a very smooth curve here. So something like this and continue it and wrap it around here. And with this, I think we are able to uh, adjust the, the line. So I'm going to take away all of these stops. And of course, that's going to mess a little bit with the happiness of these zones. But as you can see, the line has already adjusted. So now we can we just need to relocate the, the stops and perhaps add a couple of them perhaps over here next to the power plants and the very central stop here that can serve this uh, entire part of the district and instead of having the tram line coming all the way here we can remove these stops and just uh, go around this loop oh and i need to convert um, this uh, these types of roads as well so let me just grab a two lane with tram tracks and upgrade this And now I should be able to do that with no problem. So something like this. Okay. Okay. So I think that's a more direct route. And now we can do the thing that I told you about and start heading a bus line. So I'm going to place the biofuel bus depot. I think this is the one. Yes, it is. I'm going to place it right here, right next to the... Um, to the tram depot and I'm going to create a couple of lines that will serve this area so I think I'm gonna start with a general bus line that will come through here and bring people to this district so I think I can do something like that okay and for the time being this line is really really short because we don't have uh, nothing zone here but Eventually, as I expand this area, I want to make this line much bigger and, and cover this entire uh, chain um, of blocks that we have here for industrial. And now I'm going to build a second line that will serve the residential district. So I'm going to add a first stop right over here, right next to the uh, tram line. And this line will bring people from the stops all the way to their homes no matter where they are inside this district. So I placed a stop here, but that removes some trees. I'm not really sure if I like that. Let me see over here. It does the same thing. So, okay, so I'm going to do it here anyway. And um, let's see. I need to think about coverage. Okay, so first line is built and perhaps I can make a line that goes counterclockwise because this is such a big area to cover. All right, guys, so much better. 39% trip saved on our tram line. And we can also see that we have a lot more people using the tram system. We even have some particular and very specific stops that have a lot of people. Usually the last stops in the residential district before uh, going to um, the industrial district, which are this one and also this one over here. Where, as you can see, a lot of people are waiting. Regarding our bus lines, so we have bus line number one, which is pretty unused, so 0% cars free saved. That's because this line is particularly small at the moment, so it's pretty much worthless, but I'm not going to delete it because it's providing land value to the, the industrial district, so I'm going to keep it. As for the other ones, so the lines in our residential district, we have a considerable number of passengers using them. So one of them has 37% cars to save, and the other one has 24. So I'm going to leave them as they are, as they are providing, again, land value 
to this district and we have a lot of buildings upgrading as you can see by the green arrows or the occasional green arrows that, were, that we have popping on the screen. Another thing that I might add is that we still haven't completed the um, cycling lane as you might have noticed by now so it pretty much ends here but we already have a lot of people uh, using these lanes even though it's not even complete because the idea is for the lane to provide access to the entire city and for that the first step would be to connect it uh, directly to the industrial district that we have so perhaps that's something that we can do on a future episode so a lot of people actually gave uh, a lot of suggestions regarding the names for this particular district because I asked for it in the last video so thank you so much for that. A lot of the names provided were on the lines of Crescent District or Alf Moon District something like that because, because it has this circular pattern. And the thing is, because this city is based on a curved road only challenge, there's the possibility that we'll have multiple districts that have a shape similar to uh, the shape of this district. So perhaps those types of names are not the most adequate for this district because it's going to be a bit repetitive. I prefer something less literal. And eventually the name that I've chosen for this entire district is Emerald District. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to name the district, the park and also the pedestrian area to represent this new name. And with that we have Emerald Residentials for the name of the district, Emerald Park for the park area and finally Core Emerald for the central area that we've built in this video. Another thing that people have suggested was change the road type of this bridge for something that looks well a bit better, so I think that's something we can do now. And we need something that's actually a four lane, so I think we have this particular option or we can also convert it to a four line, so something like this or this one, the American six lane avenue. I think for the time being I am going to stick with the four lane for now. If we ever upgrade this outside avenue to a six lane, we can upgrade the bridge as well. Oh, and now that I remember, we have actually never upgraded this part of the avenue here. So the very outer ring. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with this one. The four lane with grass and trees on the sides. For trees, I don't really wanna go overboard with this. So I think I'm gonna use a slightly bigger tree than the default one, which is the small beach. Finally, we can also upgrade the pedestrian bridge on the park. That's also something that people have recommended. So we actually have uh, the European bridge which looks extremely dangerous and this one, the American one and you know what, I think I'm gonna go with the European one even though it looks um, a bit dangerous on the railings those railings look way too flimsy if you zoom out it kinda adds a bit of structure and I actually like these pillars and also this uh, support structure a lot more than the default one so I think we are going to stick with this one but anyway guys that will be it for this video I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope to see you on the next one take care and as always have fun